Hi, I'm Patricia Grabarek. And I'm Katina Sawyer, and welcome to the Worker Being Podcast. Today, Patricia has an article for us, um, which is very exciting because I don't know much about what it is, so I'm curious to hear what you have in store for us. So could you tell us a little bit about what we're going to be talking about? Yeah, we're going to be talking about email incivility, which as we get into the concept, I think everyone has experienced this. Um, So basically, like when people are maybe rude or ignoring your emails, and this article specifically looks at passive versus active email incivility and how passive email incivility is actually pretty problematic for your health, Hmm. Um, but they didn't find the same for active, so... Dun, dun, dun. Well, that's interesting so it's like the like yeah per my last email like yeah yeah or the like <laughs> the like really short and weird emails that you get it's like you send like a whole email and someone's like got it right and you're like, and you're uh, like ah, was it good do you, do hate, you hate me, me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I mean sneak preview I pretty much like it seems they not they didn't test this directly, but I have a feeling it's the ambiguity piece that makes it mm. worse for you. Yeah, that makes sense. I know ambiguity. People perseverate on things that they can't make, you know, sense of because the longer it takes you to be like, if you know someone hates you, you're like, okay, they hate me. This sucks, but like, whatever. I can at least cope with it and move on. But if you're like, do they? Don't they? Are they mm-hmm. mad? I don't know. It takes up a lot more mental energy. So exactly. If people are like, like I'm trying to think of other things that people say in emails that are like passive aggressive per, per my last email are like, um, as previously discussed or like, um, I'm going to refer you to our prior conversation in which we decided (laughs) blah, blah. (laughs) But a lot of the, the passive stuff that they're saying is actually more like, They didn't respond to your email at all. (gasps) Like, that seems rough. That has not happened to me a lot. Oh. Like, they ignore your email or they take a really long time to respond. Some people see that. That has happened to me. Yeah. People see that as being passive. So, well, I'll I'll share some examples when we get there. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. This is obviously a topic of interest. I'm like, what other stuff do people do? Yeah. Mm. Uh, People do lots of weird things in emails. Some of them were like shocking in terms of the active ones. So just get ready. Buckle your (laughs) seatbelt. You're in for a bumpy email incivility ride. (laughs) Yep. Exactly. (laughs) It's... It's interesting. That's great. Um, yeah. Love it. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, yes. In the meantime, how are you doing, my dear? I'm doing good. Um, I am in the throes of collecting data for a study on mindfulness that like, um, has been uh, very interesting, but also we cracked the code of why we've collected like a, a few rounds of this data and it just doesn't seem to be like working the way that it should be based on like all the theory and all the other data that we have and whatever and what we figured out because we're doing the study online is that people are not actually paying attention to the mindfulness session that we're putting people oh. in and that is throwing things all off so we actually put in like a timer question where we can see how long people spend on the screen that's the mindfulness and at first we were just getting rid of people who were speeding through But then we started thinking, well, if you spend a long time on the screen, like much longer than what the session is, like you're just staring at it for like 30 seconds after it's done and not clicking to go into the survey, that probably means you've walked away from it and started doing something else. Yeah, that's a good point. So when we got rid of all those people, now it works. Interesting. Yeah, it was like this like mysterious, like for days I was just collecting data, collecting data, being like, what is happening? Like... We have four other data sets. The mindfulness, like live mindfulness sessions work, like putting people through mindful Mondays where they go on a, like, uh, you know, for an hour each Monday works, like measuring people's level of mindfulness in the morning before they go into the workday works. Like, but this like stupid study where we're having people listen to this mindfulness thing online, like just wasn't working. And we've cracked the code that if that people are, telling us that they paid attention to try to get the money but they didn't actually pay attention so 
Almost done. Collected 50 more people. Actually, as we speak, there are 49 out of 50. So there's one more person that needs to take it on MTurk. And then we'll have our new data. And hopefully when we filter it out, we'll see that in the full sample, this new process has worked. But it's been a very interesting mystery. Yeah, that's hard. So anyone listening, doing surveys and studies, please pay attention. That is so (laughs) unfair. Like, that's so frustrating. (laughs) Yeah, it's annoying because we have to pay everybody no matter what. And so and like we have all these questions like in your honest opinion, like it will not affect your payment. Did you pay attention? Were you distracted? But I think even when we say that people like don't want to say no because they're still afraid it's going to affect their payment. Right. And it wasn't until we started thinking about it like, okay, if you sit through like a 16 minute mindfulness thing and then you're just staring at it being finished for like 30 seconds, why would you do that? Like you're probably doing something else and thinking, okay, I got to go back to the room where my computer is in 16 or so minutes. You know what I mean? Like, and then people are clicking on it when they get back to the room. So like, you're not going to just sit and stare at a screen that's completed for like a full minute. So when we got rid of those people, now all of a sudden, lo and behold, when we just include the people that seem to have clicked right after it was done, now it works. So they're the true people that are paying attention. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, people do that all the time. There's like, um, in some tools, like I think it's WebEx. Mm -hmm. I think it's WebEx where like if you are doing a training session, there's like certain functionality that if you're running a training, you can see people that are like not paying attention. Mm. So like they've gone to a different screen or they, their computer like dimmed or, you know, like any Uh of those kinds of things. So I feel like, yeah, people do that. People will just leave it and go and do whatever. So makes sense. Yeah. It's too bad though. Yeah. So it's been like, this is our seventh data collection for this. Wow. (laughs) Over That's the past lot. like three weeks, we've done seven different data collections. And t- just today, it was like a bing. Like, that's what's happening. They're walking <laughs> away from it. it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. So anyway, but now it's working. So hopefully this new data is lovely and beautiful. And then we don't have to worry about it anymore. Yes. Fingers what's, crossed. What's going on with you? I know that you had a scenario happen in the past couple days. <laughs> A scenario happened. A scenario. Um, my husband broke a tooth <laughs> playing lacrosse, yes. and it's a thing. And it was. I won't go into all the details because I do know there have been some people I've told about it. They're like, "No, don't tell me about teeth problems." And so I'm like, <laughs> "Oh, okay." So I won't go into all the detail, but basically, he broke his front tooth. Someone hit him really hard with a lacrosse stick, like hit him right in the tooth. He broke plays it in half. lacrosse. You should clarify yes. that. Okay, yes. He <laughs> plays lacrosse. He was out playing a pickup game, and someone basically hit him in the mouth with the lacrosse stick. Like, the way he hit him was, like, going up into the helmet. So the helmet, it was box lacrosse. So if anybody knows that, there's, like, a cage on your face, basically, but not in the same way as a helmet for field. So that, that, hel- that cage can, like, pop up. And so the way he got hit, it hit it so hard it popped the – the cage up off his face and then the stick went straight into his mouth and broke his tooth. So it was, (laughs) it was a fun Sunday night when that happened. And then they went to the dentist on Monday. And for now he's got like a temporary cap um, in place, but eventually he's probably going to have to get an implant. He'll probably lose the whole tooth. So it's been dramatic. (laughs) My true question is, is he going to keep playing lacrosse? Someone else asked me that today and yeah, he's like ready to go back and I think he's nuts, Uh, (laughs) but he, he's, yeah, as soon as he can, he's needs to get a mouth guard and our dentist is going to make like a special one for him. Um, especially cause now like all of his teeth in the front have had trauma. So they need to be more, he needs to be more careful. Uh, but yeah, he's Traumatized ready. Traumatized teeth. I know. But the best is when I asked him, I was like, well, what happened? Did you talk to the kid that hit you? Because it was like a, it was a high school kid that was playing pickup with them. So it's Ugh. like some, yeah. Anyways, I'm annoyed at this child. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but he was like, no, I, he literally like just grabbed his stuff and wa- as soon as he stood up from the hit, because he got knocked over, as you can imagine. Yeah. Has to be a pretty hard hit to break your tooth. So he just grabbed his stuff and walked out. Um, 
and they was just that's it so he didn't even like see who did it <laughs> like he found out who did it because his friend told him he was like i know i'll get in a fight if i stay here and so he just left he just <laughs> left he was like yeah. he just got his tooth knocked out and then was like goodbye and just like yeah. walked off the field yeah just grabbed his stuff and walked off and that was that's it. so funny <laughs> yeah and then one of the one of the guys on that plays with them is a nurse and he grab the tooth that was like still on Ooh, the cord good <laughs> and call. so he he grabbed it didn't end up mattering because the, the way the tooth broke it they couldn't use it but just in case like we didn't know right and yeah so he like ran after him he's like i have your tooth your tooth <laughs> put <laughs> it in milk <laughs> did you know that put it in milk yeah that's a thing i, I didn't know that. that because um someone had spent i don't know why but someone had um like come over to our family's house when I was young it was like a family friend or something I don't even remember but I just have a distinct memory of the person telling a story about their tooth falling out and I remember them being like you have to put it in milk and like for some reason it just stuck out in my head when I was little like milk like it was just like a weird thing and so I have always like <laughs> yeah like for whatever reason I do know that but I but I'm not quite sure why it was so important to me that is interesting that it stuck yeah. with you but yeah I'd never heard that before so he put his tooth in milk and wasn't and didn't end up being usable because of the way the break happened. But it was very nice of uh, that guy to run after him. And yeah, for sure. Bring him his tooth. Uh, so, yeah, it was uh, the drama doesn't end in 2020. No, it truly does not. It's mm -hmm. just it's the way it is. Yeah. And now Danny. Well, at least, you know, it happened in time for Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh well the other d he said the strangest thing the other day so he said he was like i hope that by the time that i have to get an implant that the technology is such that i can screw in and unscrew the fake tooth <laughs> so i can change it out he literally said so i can change it out and have a decorative tooth if I want it from time to time. A decorative like, tooth if I want it? <laughs> yeah. He's like, maybe one day I want to have a fang. Maybe. And I was like, you were nuts. Like, literally, <laughs> who would want that? Nobody wants that. Uh, you're like, I pray the opposite for you. Because yeah. I do not want to deal with a land where you have access to decorative teeth no i mean could you imagine he'd have like a drawer in the bathroom with just like his different teeth like yes it would just i be could terrifying and, he would. and like every time i went over there he would like put in a different tooth and try to scare us or something yes I yeah a hundred percent or he would I like do it. like right now the dodgers are in the world series and he's a big dodger fan so he'd have like a dodger dodger's tooth, tooth. Like, <laughs> it would just be ridiculous <laughs> Wow. Yeah, he probably would. I would imagine that that could be true. Uh, so let's hope anybody that's researching how to change teeth, like if you have an implant, how to change it for yourself, please stop. Yeah. Just don't do it. Don't do it. I think that's a good idea. I think yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Well, I wish Danny's tooth a speedy recovery. And I hope that um, no one is uncivil to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh what a transition <laughs> it was really good um <laughs> i would call so. that active incivility <laughs> what happened <laughs> oh boy and danny's well, was passive when he walked out <laughs> yes exactly yes yes well that's perfect um so <laughs> in in that spirit let's talk about what's going on with yes. your article Okay, let's do it. So this article was actually just published October 2020 in the Journal of Occupational Health Psychology. It was written by Juan Park and Slitter, and it's called Put You Down Versus Tune You Out, Further Understanding Active and Passive Email Incivility. Mm. Ooh, yeah, I, I kind of like the title. So, yeah, me too. So basically it talks about, like I said, active and, and passive email email and civility so we know that it's pretty easy to be rude or ambiguous in your email communication I think everybody's familiar with like social media and email and how sometimes it's hard to understand tone so there's one it's hard to misinterpret tone so you do get a lot of these kind of email and civility situations that are based on perception but then two it's also really easy to be mean in email Mm -hmm. Um, so they talk a little bit about like some research on like how 
people feel less inhibited um, in terms of the way they communicate via email. They're more likely to, you know, be quick, curt, just, you know, say what they got to say. If they're mad, just throw it out there and not think about it. I think we had talked about it this like an episode gosh years ago at yeah. this point maybe where it's like taking that second to think about your email like pause breathe don't write it if you write it when you're mad don't send it read it later type yeah of thing. yep yeah I remember uh we were talking about because um Rick Jacobs gave me uh, one of our professors at Penn State gave me the advice of like if you're ever unsure about like an email if it seems important like you have to you're upset or you feel like you're communicating something important that could have an emotional tone, like send it to yourself and like read it as that person first to make sure that you don't regret sending it later. Like he gave me all this like advice about it. So I think we have talked about that before. Mm -hmm. I believe so. Yeah. So this gets to that point, right? This whole article is about email and civility. And then it talks about the impact on um, wellness. So kind of like as a high level overview Research prior to this had found that email incivility led to things like lower job satisfaction. You're more likely to want to leave your job. You're more likely to be deviant at work. So like stealing pens or whatever. Um, Give me those you're pens. More, yeah. <laughs> you're more, <laughs> it's all. Yeah. When people are mean to you, you steal pens. It's all about the pens. Um, <laughs> um, there's more absenteeism. People not showing up to work. Um, when pe- there's a lot of email and civility, you see lower levels of energy, less engagement. So there's obviously a lot of bad things associated with email and civility. And this article specifically looked at um, sleep and negative emotion um, in regards to it. So going towards the wellness perspective as to how it can impact you from a wellness uh, side of things. And they looked at, like I said, the two different types of email and civility, active and passive Awesome. That's exciting. So can mm-hmm. you tell us a little bit more about, I know we talked a little bit in the introduction, but can you tell us a little bit more about what would count as an active or a passive email incivility? Yeah. So when they're asking questions about this, so it, they had, the study had, well, this paper had two studies. So they, and then both of them, they asked frequency of email and civility. And so if it's active, one of the questions could be someone sent me emails using a rude and discourteous tone. If it's passive, a question would sound like someone ignored a request that I made through email. So those are two of the questions, but then they actually give examples because one of the studies in the second study, they asked people to attach the email they're referring to um, when they were answering the questions. Mm. So the examples, so some active email and civility examples. Um, Example one, I have been, so this is something somebody actually received. (laughs) I've been very busy putting things together for this project a lot more than you recently. So be ready to hit it hard this week to catch up on things. Wow. That is yeah. weird. That's yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, and then the second email. So the person who sent them the email was being asked to complete a required training. And the, the person then responded to the, study participant said is this a joke are you kidding me complete waste of time resources and money wow okay Uh, so yeah not very nice yeah uh the passive email so one was i didn't get an email after asking to reschedule a meeting it was a lack of response that i consider rude so uh that's the person describing it right right so they so basically this is more of a description because they they didn't they allowed people to describe the email if they were allowed to attach it because of company policies that makes sense um yeah so basically they were saying that it's been eight days they've been trying to reschedule a meeting and the person never responded so that was one passive example gotcha and then another passive one so the person was saying that in response to a request to acknowledge an important piece of information the person would reply got it what else do you need so just Mm, very concise curt you know not even though it was important, they just kind of blew it off. Like, yep, got it. We're done. Move on. Gotcha. So a lot of people seem to think, feel like that's a passive email. Okay. Um, passive email instability, which is interesting to me because I feel like I'm guilty of that sometimes without trying to be like actually incivil. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that one's tough because especially with like technology, 
like where you could be like running from meeting to meeting like on your phone and you don't want to like you don't want to um I think that that's difficult like you don't want to not respond to somebody so it could be like that their intention and I know it's about the perception not the intention but that is interesting to think about because you could very well be intended to be like okay you know I I just want you to know I received this um and not like leave the person hanging um at the same time it could come across on the other end from a perception standpoint like you're you don't care so I think that one's kind of interesting because Mm -hmm. probably a lot of people send short emails like that especially like from their phone or something where they're like in between things you want to let the person know you received it but it's interesting to think about how it's perceived on the other end yeah it is and I think that's really what the takeaways are is to think about those emails think about how you're wording them and maybe it's just being more transparent like I'm between meetings I saw the email I'll read it in more depth later thanks Mm -hmm. Something like that. Something where you're actively acknowledging why your email is short. Yeah. That might be a solution that I've been thinking about since reading the article. So anyways, I'll tell you a little bit about the the results because I think they're interesting. It's a pretty straightforward article. Um, So there were, as I mentioned, there were two studies. So the first study was just looking at are there truly different types of email and civility, right? So they were testing to see is active and passive. Are those two things different? And okay. they were. Um, And they also were checking to see, you know, if passive emails tend to be considered more ambiguous, which they were. And then they also found that active email incivility was found to be more emotional. So Mm. things like they people would respond that the email was emotionally charged. So that's kind of the big difference between passive and active. It's the, you know, there's some ambiguity or it's just like it's unclear, but it seems rude. Okay. And then the... The active emails, people felt like they were more emotional. Okay. So things that makes like sense. all caps, you know, stuff like that. That makes perfect sense. Okay. Um, so the first one was basically to just establish like there are different kinds of incivility and they found that there were. Um, yes. And then moving forward, they're going to try to say, okay, now what impact do these have? Exactly. So then they looked in study two, they, they did like a, a daily survey study. So people received three surveys a day. Um, so the first sur- survey was at 3 p.m. and it would ask them about any email and civility they faced at work. They did a second survey at 7, which was more of like a control. So did they check emails at home? Is there anything else from an incivility perspective that was happening there? And then the next morning they had a survey which was about their sleep and their negative affect or really negative emotion mm-hmm. if you think about it that way. So the way they measured sleep, they did a four item insomnia scale, which included items like I had trouble falling asleep. Okay. And then for the negative emotions, they basically asked people to agree with if they felt certain things in the morning. So things like angry or frustrated. So different negative emotions. Um, And what they found was that active email instability didn't really have an impact on Hmm. either sleep or negative emotions. But passive did. So mm. basically what they found was that passive email and civility led to more insomnia, which led to more negative emotions. Okay. So, so yeah. It's really the, so even more so than like, a, hey, don't be mean by email. Because the mean ones, I, I don't know, like it seemed like you would have to be fairly I mean, I'm sure this is true, but you'd have to be fairly dense to not realize that you're sending like a mean email when you're sending those emails. Like it seems like you're trying to get a point across that you're angry. So, you know, if the takeaway was don't send those emails, they're really bad. I feel like that would be like, okay, that's pretty straightforward. But the fact that it's the more passive emails and we just talked about how it could it could be misconstrued and maybe that's not even your intention with those emails like that's really fascinating yeah I think it makes it a little bit harder as to figure out what to do about it right so I think if you're writing an email and you know you're being passive aggressive that's probably something to consider right if you are trying to give little digs that are like very quiet like not Mm -hmm. super obvious but somebody might pick up on or feels ambiguous then rethink your approach but if you're not doing that if you're just doing things that might come off that way that are very quick you know 
fast responses, short responses, or Mm -hmm. thinking, oh, I'll get to that email later and then not responding for like a week. Those things tend to be construed more negatively. So thinking about how you're doing that. And I think one of the good things they talked about in the article in terms of ideas of what companies can do is like thinking about creating like a rules of engagement for emails within the organization. Hmm. So as a company, it's expected that you'll respond to an email within a certain period of time. You know, it's expected that, you know, like if you have certain structures or people are talking about it and they're creating a culture on how emails are written and shared, then I think you can, you know, have a pretty good impact, right? You can probably make some changes. If people know, oh, it's the culture to say, got it. And they'll get back to you later just to acknowledge receipt, then great. Right. If it's a culture that you just don't say anything until you actually get to it, then maybe you won't assume silence is bad. You just assume mm-hmm. silence is busy. So I think having some clear guidelines or, you know, ideas or approaches or even just communication within teams as to how they do things. Um, I think once you get to know someone better, it tends to be a little bit easier to right. know why you haven't heard from them. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Um, And I think that that is partially, you know, if you have these email rules of engagement that, you know, it becomes normative. And so I think like part of it is like you can bank goodwill like, oh, I know this person. And so if they're sending me a short email, I'm I'm going to infer their tone and infer their intention because I have enough experience with them to know they probably don't mean to be short or upset with me or that like you know I know that we're good friends so like doesn't matter like when you said like oh sometimes I send short emails like I was like do you like it doesn't register to me because I'm not inferring it that way if that makes sense Mm -hmm. uh probably because I know you well but if I didn't know you as well maybe at some point it could have registered you know what I mean like I don't know but I think there's like two things like the making it normative and then also like learning the norms of that person and viewing the message in light of those norms but without those two things it could be difficult to know what's going on yeah exactly and I think there are some times where people send these short little emails and mean them to be sure rude so it's just trying it's hard because it's ambiguous and people don't know so I think really the onus is onus is that the word I'm looking for yeah Own- okay onus. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why I like that just like tripped in my brain and I was like what is this Opus. what are you saying <laughs> <laughs> That was weird. I had a brain trip. For it's some okay. Reason. That happens sometimes where a word just like looks weird or sounds weird. And you're like, um, what? Like, am I saying it right? Yeah. But, okay. So it's on, but it's on the person that is sending the email to mm-hmm. make it clear. And if you don't know somebody, you should think about being a little bit more transparent as to why your email is short or you know, taking a couple seconds longer to write another sentence or something like that. Mm -hmm. If you don't know them, if you're a leader, thinking about how to practice this so that your team kind of all functions effectively. You know, if you, I know that a lot of times, like I know I do this. I know that my boss does this. You know, sometimes you're busy and you're not going to get to your emails till the end of the day, but you don't want to like let it go. So you might just say a quick word here and there, make it a you know, practice to show like a good example of that. Say, right. Hey, I'm in between meetings. I saw this. I'll get back to you. Like, right. Even right. you can do, I know in a lot of email, um, like on your phone, you can create like shortcuts, right? You can like type, um, if you type these three letters and like a different message pops up, like there's yeah. ways to set that up in, at least on the iPhone. Um, so if you're going to be typing from your phone, like maybe you can set up some shortcuts that instead of saying like, got it, you just type, got it. And it'll populate a thing that's exactly yeah. what I said where it's like yeah I'll be, da, da, da. um so I think you can think about ways and strategies to do that so then you're modeling um kind of better email etiquette so then people yeah. don't be confused especially as a leader I mean people are always like wondering if their boss hates them or is mad at them or if they're doing something wrong so as a leader definitely it's important but then if you're modeling that then I think other people will start to do that same behavior Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And like, I do see sometimes people have the like, you know, the message at the bottom of their phone that's like, please excuse my brevity. I'm on my phone. And like, I do take that into consideration when people have that like, oh, they're on their phone. Like, 
you know, they're, they're probably typing quickly, whatever. So even adding something like you're saying, like something, some kind of context, either if you put it in the message, you have something that surrounds the message, like you make it a habit to let people know, or you use a shortcut, like whatever it is, but like either making the message more filled out, involving something like, sorry, this is short. I'm in between meetings, whatever. Or like having some sort of a something that's basically like people know that if you're answering from your phone, it's probably going to be shorter than if you're answering from your laptop or whatever. Yeah, exactly. I think there's so many ways to work around this. So I think that's the main takeaway, right? We don't want to be hurting other people's sleep and making them, putting them bad moods. Like basically what you're doing is you're making people not sleep and you're making them wake up mad or upset or in a bad mood. And then that ruins their day. And obviously that's going to have an impact on wellness and probably the way they interact with other people. So then you're creating a cycle of negativity that can be avoided if you're just a little bit more thoughtful in the way that you speak in your emails. So yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, I'm sure that active email incivility has some negative impacts probably on things like relationships um, and you know, I'm sure that there's other things that might have an impact there. Like it's never nice to get someone being actively rude to you and right. mean for no reason. But I do think the passive piece is you're sitting there thinking about it. What did that mean? Why did that happen? You're like more, yeah, you might be more consumed by that because of the ambiguity. So I think it's just really important to try to remove the ambiguity. If you are upset with somebody because of it, don't make it a big deal on your email. I mean, have an actual conversation with the person. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been nice if they had measured, um, a rumination or something like that to get a sense of like, what's the mechanism. Yeah. Um, but I think that that's probably what it is based on what we know about when you have these ambiguous things happening throughout the course of a day. Um, you know, that's what occurs is that you don't really think about it until you get to the end of your day. And then all of a sudden you're like, Oh, like this thing happened. And now I'm trying to like think through why. And like, was it something about me or something about them or like whatever the case may be. Um, So that's definitely, I think something to keep in mind is that like moving forward, it would be interesting to know, like, is that the mechanism that people are ruminating over it? Or is it that like, you know, they're stressed and it's disrupting their sleep or they're spending time like they're feeling anxious and they can't fall asleep, but they don't know why they're not like replaying it. You know what I mean? Like whatever. I think there's like multiple things that it could be in the scenario. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. That's the next study. So someone out there hopefully is working on that to tell us why this is the case. Yeah. So don't send passive aggressive before you hit send. If you mean to send it, think about like is this really the impact that I want to have on other people and if you're a manager you can probably set the tone by not sending emails like that or by creating some sort of norms like you mentioned where you actively talk about like what's expected from an email perspective which could help people to like keep that in mind and then the second piece is you know if you're not thinking about it you're not sure if you're doing it or not, go back and think about if you weren't you, how would you interpret your emails and do they fall into that category? And if so, trying to come up with some of these workarounds that, you know, even if you're just being more absent minded about it, you're not trying to intentionally be negative. Is there a way that you can make this problem go away? Exactly. That's a great recap. Awesome. Well, I love it. This is great. I think this is a really, really Um, common issue that people experience that now we have some uh, good solutions for and also just keeping it more on people's radar because I think it's really important to keep it top of mind. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a very relatable topic. So hopefully everyone out there has learned something and can apply it and be a better emailer (laughs) to others. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so thanks for listening. Uh, We'd love to hear from all of you if you have any Feedback, questions, thoughts, you can email us at contact at workerbeing.com. You can find us on social media on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter at WorkerBeing. And you can check out our brand new, super exciting, redone website at workerbeing.com. Thanks for listening. The Worker Being Podcast is hosted by us, Patricia Grabar and Katina Sawyer, and produced by Allie Johnson. Mm